in the high country of the mind, one has to become adjusted to the thinner air of uncertainty and to the enormous magnitude of questions asked and to the answers proposed to the... We need to talk about time blindness. So I just got yelled at for asking a very reasonable question. So I'm if you're aware of time blindness, then you might also be aware of this girl who caused a whole uproar on the internet, as some people started calling BS on this condition being a disability, while some people online felt genuinely helpless about this condition. And people feel helpless because it disables them from being there for their families and their jobs on time, and that caused them a lot of pain. But the real question is, is this something that we're at the mercy of? Or is it something that we can adapt to? Join me in the journey of discovery as we understand the fundamental elements that make time disappear and the one thing that brings it back. On this first episode of The Pillars of Life on Mindscreen. One of the first signs of time blindness is this. You doing lots and lots of things very, very quickly, switching between them very often without completing even a single task. But how are they connected to time blindness? When we switch tasks very, very quickly, what's happening is that within our brain, there's a clock and that clock runs so much faster than what our senses are telling us. And that creates a divide and a disconnect between the two things. But the question is, if my clock is, is running so much faster, shouldn't I be doing things much faster? No. This actually results in you being chronically late all the time because of your inability to predict the time required for each task. But this difference in time means that we practically have no internal clock. But before I explain this concept, you gotta come with me into the kitchen as I cook my breakfast because I have to head out for work, right? And within one hour, I'll get hungry again. So let's just make some breakfast and talk while we're at it, okay? To understand why our internal clocks disappear, we need to understand this concept of perspective, memory. But before you find it too boring, I promise I'll make it into something really, really delicious. See, perspective memory is the type of memory that reminds you what you'll need to do in the future and at the exact time you need it. Like me realizing that I'll be hungry in a few hours, so I need to make a breakfast like this beautiful omelette. So step one of perspective memory is to take that image of an omelette and storing it in my memory. Step two is when my brain gives me the signal to get cracking with the eggs. And step three is remembering to switch. So when I'm cooking the egg, I remember that I also have to add the cheese. Step four is when my brain tells me that it's the right time to switch from cooking it the egg to adding the cheese and switching back to baking the egg again. And when the whole process ends, you have a delicious omelet that you can have. But this is for those who don't have time blindness. But for those who do, the process looks a little bit different. So let's go back a little bit. But before I explain this concept to you, I need to head out to work for a little bit. But between work and now, there's two hours. I think I have the right thing in mind to do in these two hours. For people who lack perspective memory, there is no imagination of the future. So, if no breakfast comes in my imagination, there is no breakfast, there is no pre-prep. We just choose to deal with things when they come our way. And when we lack perspective memory, we start reacting to external stimuli instead of preparing for it. So, we only start living in the present, and the present is that I have to rush to work The 
question is, isn't being in the present better than being somewhere in the future or being stuck somewhere in the past? Honey, I'm literally on the way. I'm in the car right now. Let's see. What the heck is this? And as we shift from the planning to the reacting stage of life, we start relying on something known as the executive function. It's the thing that is responsible for self-control, for memory, and for allowing you to do multiple things at once. It all boils down to just one problem, that our brains cannot process future tasks. And when they cannot process future tasks, the task that is happening right now uses all of our executive function, which is already in a limited supply. Like an FPS game, where you can only see and destroy one asteroid at a time, our tasks get finished only one task at a time. But my younger self didn't know how to deal with this, so his life was uh, messed up. And as I was looking for an old clip to show you how my life was a complete mess, I found a video from 2018 that summarizes this beautifully. I hope you understand it. How to fix this procrastinating situation? Because, as you can probably tell, that I'm a, I'm big on procrastination. Okay, let me show you something else. Life's been like completely fucked. Look at this. This used to be empty, but it's like piling up through shit here and there. And seven years later, my life isn't all bad. I'm starting my own family. I'm working at a job which is a really good job. I'm doing my MBA in marketing. I'm also working on this channel. And the issues that used to plague my life in the past almost seem like a distant dream at this point. But what actually happened between the 20 year old me and the 27 year old version of me? My whole journey of growth boils down to just three key insights that helped me overcome my lack of prospective memory. Insight one, not all tasks are made like actions. When our brains have a habit to forget tasks, the most easiest way to remember things is to write them down. But what we actually do is to leave the important steps and the crucial details to our imagination and to our memory. This is when this book comes in. And the, and the premise of this book is simply that not all tasks are made like actions. And so in this book, Scott Belsky simply suggests that instead of writing down a task, you should write down the, what the action is supposed to be within that task. So that when you're looking back at your notes, you have a shorthand of whatever action you're supposed to take instead of thinking about, oh, am I supposed to get get the diamonds or am I supposed to get the silver or what? So you don't, there's no ambiguity when you're about to execute on that task. Insight two, the future is just a different version of the past. When we lack prospective memory, it's oftentimes very hard for us to predict future actions. So when it comes time for a big project like a wedding, it's very natural for you to feel a bit overwhelmed. This is a prime example of our asteroid problem. But how do we fix this? Well, just by doing this. In this way, we can see the future actions and we will know what's about to come our way months and weeks in advance. The difference in perspective comes when we start treating our task as each separate entity and club them all together in for, under one goal and make a project. And suddenly when we club our things together, we can draw comparison to things that we've done in the past that have, that have the similar intensity or similar nature. And suddenly you can use your experience of building a house and use it to throw a really, really good wedding party. Inside three, just because you're not born with something doesn't mean you can't build it later. Even though the task tracking and the project approach to things in life is really, really good. But one thing we cannot get over is our physical inability to remember to do things on time. And so even though our tasks are prepared and our actions are written down, we won't be able to remember them when it's the right time to do so. So what's the point? Well, this is when insight number three's word, build, 
comes in handy. So I used Notion to rebuild myself an augmented digital perspective memory, and it's made to do only three things. One is it's meant to show me all my future tasks. Number two, it's meant to remember all my future tasks. And number three, it's meant to trigger and remind me to do them when it's the right time to do so. When I do all these things in Notion, by firstly building myself a project. Secondly, I make myself a list by going through all the actions that I need to take in this project. Thirdly, I just assign a time to each thing. Then, I press forward slash and just add a board view to the whole project. Suddenly, all the tasks that were once jumbled together now show up beautifully in a horizontal clock. And if you forget to look at the clock, no worries, just press the reminder button in each task to get a reminder on your phone minute by minute. These three insights combine to give me a life that I always wanted to live and it's a life that is without compromise and it's without any limitations, right? And that's why I felt like it was so important for me to share them with you and <laughs> it took a lot of effort and a lot of research papers to go through to come to you with this video and with this actionable advice. So I hope you liked watching this video. If there's something else you want me to cover uh, on, on this channel, please let me know and I will make sure to do my best possible way and best possible effort to bring you something that is really, really good and actionable. And make sure if you like this channel, uh, please subscribe and ring the bell. It really helps out a lot and motivates me a lot to make me a lot more videos. So yeah, appreciate it. And yeah, I'll see you soon.